Most of the historic buildings in San Francisco are made out of Sierra White granite. Even when you walk around many parts of the city, a lot of the curbs are still the original Sierra White granite. One of the primary things you want to do to make a project sustainable is build something that's durable and beautiful so that you're not compelled to tear it down in 20 years. Something that will last and that people want to have in their community. I grew up in San Francisco and uh, ended up going to UC Berkeley for architecture. Mostly I was um, inspired by ancient Roman architecture and uh, Renaissance architecture as well. The ideas that caused um, great change in the way people think. I've been with KMD for almost 13 years now and my role on the 525 Golden Gate project since 2000 has been as the project architect. What we tried to create was an architecture that appealed to the neoclassical Civic Center Plaza, but also was clearly a building that looks to the future, aesthetically and technologically. One of the goals of the Public Utilities Commission was uh, to create a 100-year building, so durability was very important. And the stone was the perfect transitional material between some of the innovation that we incorporated and the hearkening back to a historic civic center. It worked in really great balance with a lot of the other sustainable goals on the project, which led us to very clear glass. The granite providing a real anchor, a nice counterbalance to the glassy aspects. Also, what's really interesting about using the stone is by paying attention to the types of finish, you get uh, different aesthetics. For example, we have the diamond 10 finish on most of the building, and the horizontal pattern that uh, is at every floor level is done with the polished finish. And it's very subtle, but the light captures it. It ties across the stone on the entire project. We used to joke around that we were gonna take the project beyond lead, and we created a lead kryptonite uh, level. That's really when we started thinking out of the box and pushing the innovation of, of the project. We added three levels of photovoltaics on the building. The site is infamously renowned for the strong winds. So we modified what was the conference room tower into a wind tower. And so the wind is, is captured by the north facade, driven towards the wind tower, and the wind tower itself is is, is shaped literally like a wing of an airplane. We started focusing on the technical aspects of the stone, and that's when we really started working with, with Cold Spring. Right from the get-go, it was a great relationship. We spent a lot of time studying different corner joints, the, the pros and the cons of how the, the stone would meet at the corners, the ability of the stone to be cut and beveled, and also obviously anchoring to a curtain wall system. We eventually uh, visited the quarry, it was a very rewarding experience. We learned a lot from that. The communication was great. Um, they gave us all the information. Uh, all the samples came in together. And when we went there, they were all ready to prepare. And then they took us out to the block area, the actual section of the quarry where the uh, slab came from. And that experience was very nice. The project having a 100-year goal as its lifespan uh, the stone is, is just a perfect material to do that. It's, it's obviously going to be there for 100 years. It's going to be able to uh, ride through any wear and tear. The aesthetic of the material is going to, is going to continue. It's, it's a timeless material. I would say the most rewarding uh, sensation is to walk around in the city where I was born and look at this monument that will be there at least another 100 years. And, my children will have something to remember their father by.